Sorry. So I'm Holger. I'm happy to be here. I will talk about reproducible builds ecosystem, um, about why it's useful and what we've been doing. Um, I've been doing, I'm using Debian since 20 years. I started with SUSE because SUSE came with a book in the mid of the 90s. And I've done lots of things. I've done Debian QA. That's where I met Bernhard five years ago, where he told me about OpenSUSE QA. Um, yeah. And I'm also funded by the Linux, or I was funded by the Linux Foundation to work on reproducible builds together with Luna. <coughs> We have <coughs> applied for new funding, which is in the works, and I really don't know Zuse. So if I make mistakes, please forgive me. Bernhard will explain the Zuse parts later. Um, and it's also, I present the work, but it's, what I really present is the work of all these people. So I'm just one of them. There are many people who have worked on this. Um, which is also now, we we've, we've have a Jenkins set up for the test, and these are the contributors to this Debian Jenkins, but all these red people are not from Debian who contributed to this Debian thing to do reproducible tests. So it's really a cross-distro project by now. Um, so I'd like to know a bit about you, who of you is contributing to free software? Yay, thank you. And who has seen a talk about reproducible builds already? Also some. Great. Um, so I'll start a bit with the motivation why we do this. And basically I refer to this talk from Mike Perry and Seth Schön at the Congress, CCC Congress in 2014, where they really described the problem in very deep detail. I'll just give some um, highlights from the talk now. But I, I recommend watch this talk. It's really, really good. Reproducible Builds 2014 CCC Congress. So they had an example of a remote root exploit in SSH where the difference was only one a single bit in the binary. There was an error. The, the comparison was greater, and it should have been greater equal. And the difference in the binary is one bit. And one bit in 500 kilobytes decides whether you have remote root or not. So you cannot find problems by just looking at the binary, probably. They also had a live demo where they modified the sources in memory when compiling the sources, while the source on the disk was still the same. So you look at the source, the source is perfectly fine, you build the source, and you get a Trojan binary. They have done this as a live demo at Congress. This is doable. And there's financial incentive to crack developer machines. You take a developer, and you don't, you don't care about the developer, but the developer ships the software to millions of users. So by attacking the developers, you can hack people. You can get, make money, lots of money. And securing the computer. It's not only about that the computer has to be secure today. It has to be secure all the lifetime. With physical access, it's very easy to hack a computer. Um, so you can not really be sure what's running on your computer, more, and even less so on a build network. And so <coughs> open build system from SUSE is a very nice target. You attack it, and you own, immediately own millions of people. Um, and it's not really expensive. Like paying five or ten million dollars is not much money for a state-sponsored attacker or large criminal organizations. If you want to, or whatever, the German government uses it, then $10 million to attack the German government is nothing. So watch the talk from Congress if you still don't think this is useful. Um, oh, that another example. The CIA had, from the Snowden documents, they had a design of, a, of compromising an SDK, which developers download so they can attack the users. The CIA described in a white paper how they would do it. And you can say, yeah, the CIA might not do it, but this has X coast goals. It happened last year where somebody put for the iOS SDK 
um, they compromised to put it on faster servers in China where the download speed was better for the Chinese developers. So they used that SDK and 20 million applications were Trojan. So this is the problem we are it, um, protecting against. Because the problem is really free software is great. You can share it, modify, use it, pass it on, but nobody uses the source. We all use binaries. And there's no way to see what the binary comes from. All the freedoms from free software go for sources, but we all use binaries. So our solution to this is that we promise that you can all, anyone can always re re regenerate they accept bit by bit identical binaries from the same source. If you can do this, then you know the binary comes from the source and looking at the source makes sense. And we call this reproducible builds. It's not in the, there's in the, um, I think in the open build system, there's reproducible in the way that you can repeat it. And this is the same, the Debian bug tracking system has the same reproducible bugs there are things which you can do again. But we, when we say reproducible builds, we really mean this bit by bit identical. That is reproducible in the sense I'm talking about. And there's a demo. Oops. So This now builds the Debian package five times. It's just building, it takes 20 seconds, I think. And you will see at the end, there's, there will check sums, and the check sums will be different for all the binaries. So here, well, here, are, the, here are the check sums, the hashes, and they are all different for the depths. The depths are the binary packages, the others are the sources. And if I repeat this now in a Reproducible CH root. This compiles the exact same sources five times with some modifications we made to get reproducible binaries. And you will see the end result. We have five um, Debian packages which are the same, have the same hash. Here, the hash is identical. You have a yeah. Can you hear me? Am I speaking too fast? Because the acoustics is quite bad standing up here. Okay, so this, this is what we want. We want always the same binary packages. They were built five times and they're the same now. And we think this should become the norm. And we want to change the meaning of free software, that it's only free software if it's reproducible. Because else it's software, but I think free software should always be reproducible. Because you can only be sure that a binary comes from the source if you can reproduce it. Else you need to believe somebody, and believing is for churches or something. Um, So this idea is really, really new. There were some discussions um, before the year 2000s and maybe one or two projects who did it in academia, but nothing really took off. In Debian, there was a mail in 2000 on the developer list and 2007 where somebody said we should do this and people said this is not possible. And then in 2012, both Bitcoin and Tor Browser made their software reproducible. The Bitcoin people were afraid that Bitcoin has had a market capitalization of $4 billion, and they were afraid if a Trojan binary would show up and the money would go away to some Bitcoin wallet, that the developers could not say, it wasn't us, it was somebody else who did it. So they made their software reproducible so they could prove we ship what we say we are shipping and Tor Browser for similar reasons. In 2013, both Debian and FreeBSD started working on this. Um, the FreeBSD efforts were largely unnoticed in a wiki. Debian Luna made some talks which 
gathered more people interested, and including I became interested at the end of 2014 and set up reproducible Debian Net, which is just a test setup, which I'll explain shortly. And then in 2015, this really took up. We gave lots of talk. We started to go away from this reproducible Debian Net web page to reproducible builds org. And we had a meeting in Athens with, from 16 projects. I think the only major projects who were not there were Ubuntu and SUSE. There were Fedora, all the BSD, OpenWRT, several Mac ports. Um, and we hoped to have a meeting. We invited SUSE, but the SUSE people we reached out didn't have time. And we'll have a meeting this year again, and hopefully some of you will be there. Um, so what, we've, what we have now, it's, the talk is now a bit, it's a huge complex topic, so I'm starting with what we have. We have now this web page, Reproducible Builds Org, where we describe the concept, describe common problems, common solutions for this problem, where the projects are listed. I added Zuse as a participating project today, because of Bernhard's talk mostly. And this is really the URL you should remember. Everything is linked there. We used to have a Debian wiki with lots of information, but we moved it from the Debian wiki to this web page. And we have test reproducible builds org, which is the test setup, which is this Jenkins. Um, we are continuously testing Debian unstable, testing and experimental on AMD64, i386, and ARMHF. We are also testing OpenWRT, Coreboot, NetBSD, FreeBSD, SUSE, uh, SUSE, Arch Linux, Fedora, and F-Droid is not really working. And testing in this case means we build it once, we build it, then we modify the environment, and then we build it again and compare. This is the testing we do, so we build twice, basically. And we build about 10,000 packages a day twice. Um, we have 300 Jenkins jobs running on 30 hosts. Um, it's mostly Python code and Bash, and it's 30 contributors to this Jenkins setup. Um, and it, the result is static web pages and a JSON. So there's, we, I just spoke with Bernhard before the talk. Also, if Zuse would not use this, you could, if you just feed us a JSON, we could integrate it into the same web page so that we have all reproducible projects into one. Why this is useful, I'll explain in a second. Yeah, we have lots of resources, 300 gigs of RAM, 100 cores, thanks to ProfitBricks, who are really nice sponsoring this since four years now. And we have a zoo of ARM nodes, 20 small boards, Banana Pi, Raspi, Opax, whatever, um, which build this ARM stuff. And we'll get ARM64 boards this year. We're waiting for the hardware. So when we build Debian, we, we do these variations. So we vary the host name between the builds, the domain, the time zone, the locale, the username, the, the dash, the, the, the shell, the user shell is also varying. We vary the kernel. Um, we are working on varying the CPU type as well. On i386, we once built with a 32-bit kernel, once with a 64-bit kernel. Um, we, the file system is also important because the order read dear, the read dear order is not deterministic. It differs from the file system. Um, and we differ the time. So we have one build builds today and the other is running 400 days ahead. So more the year, months, and day is different. Um, and these are the variations we have for Debian. For the other tests, we have a bit less variation because it's, it's just work to do. And it's, most, it's a lot me doing this, and I'm working on aid distribution is a bit too much, so I always ask for patches and people helping me. It works with FreeBSD, OpenWT, it works nicely. With others, not so nice. Um, and we, yeah, no, I said this already. So the problems we found, it's mostly timestamps. It's really timestamps, timestamps all over. And it's not so much timestamps from the compilers, but more timestamps from documentation system. 
every documentation system thinks it's a good idea to put the t build timestamp, or most of them, build timestamp in, and often these timestamps vary by the time zone, which is really annoying if you want to build in different time zones. I'm not sure if you want to do this, but we do this. Or time zone is the other common thing, and locales. Locales also end up in the build. Um, hashes are sorted differently by builds. The sort order is different by locale. Different languages sort things differently. Not the alphabet, but the other letters. So, and this all goes into the build. And everything else, but everything else is maybe 10% of the cases. It's mostly it's really simple stuff, but it's just a lot of stuff. And Luna gave a talk at the last CCC camp where he gave 30 examples of common problems. Like GZIP normally um, has also puts locale, I think, in there, and you can just use GZIP minus N. And all these tricks, what to do, are in Lina Luna's talk from there, which has really good examples or in our documentation. We also, maybe I should go, f no, I don't go first. Let's start with this one. And then we wrote a tool, Diffoscope. Diffoscope is the tool we use to analyze the difference between two builds. So it uh, recurs recursively unpacks a Debian package, a DEP, which includes an R, and inside the R are files, whatever. There's a PDF in there, so it goes into the PDF and finds the PNG in the PDF and goes recurs recursively. Thus, comparison presents it nicely in HTML, and it falls back to binary comparison. Um, it's available in all major distributions. I'm not sure whether it's in SUSE already. It's packaged for SUSE, yeah. Um, so, and you can, Diffoscope.org is the main web page. And this is how Diffoscope looks like. On the left is the first build, on the other is the second build. And you can see there's a version number leaked in there in the bottom, and it will really nicely show it. You can go to trydiffoscope.org and just try it. And in the beginning, Diffoscope was for Debian packages, but now you can give it two objects. You can give it two RPMs, two CD images, two directories, two PDFs, give it two things of the same type, and it will compare it. So Diffoscope is also useful, which is a byproduct. If you have a new version of something and you want to see whether the difference in the binary is what you expect it is. So you can also compare two different versions of it. And Diffoscope is just a tool for debugging. If you want reproducible, it means bit by bit identically. So you don't analyze the difference, you just do a hash of the binary of the object. And if the hash is not identical, it's not reproducible. And we only care for debugging using Diffoscope, but really for the, for the question whether is something reproducible or not, just use SHA-256 sum. Oh, these LEDs are still hot. Um, so the other, the main problem we have are timestamps. And build timestamps are usually not really useful for the user. Um, because if you can build it at any time and you get the same result, and the only difference is the build timestamp in there, it's meaningless. So we came up with source state epoch, which is the, 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 the variable which holds the last modification of the source as an epoch since 1970. And this can be used instead of the current date, because this is really what matters from when the source is. It can also be used to feed random seeds. Um, and Debian, we set it from the last Debian changelog entry. Um, in other cases, it's been the last modification of the Git repository or whatever me metrics there are to set it. Um, but there's one thing more. And because the other thing which you also need besides the date is the environment in which it's built. So what's when you put it 
in, his, in the past when you put a build date in there, you also wanted to make sure I build it on this date to express these libraries were used. But we are recording the build environment anyway, so this is also not useful for us. And we had some success getting source date epoch accepted by other projects. GCC is now using it for date-time macros. Um, CLANG, we also have a patch. There's some documentation system have it. We have patches for RPM. It's um, the FreeBSD build, system, FreeBSD build system is using it now. So source date epoch um, has been adopted, I would say. We wrote a specification. The specification is two or three kilobyte text. It's really, really short, um, which defines how it's defined, how you should set it. You can go to this spec URL and read it. It's, 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 um, yeah, it's a spec. So what we did in Debian, this is the graph some of you might have seen in some point. And as of yesterday, we're 89% reproducible in Debian testing on and AMD64. The green ones are the reproducible ones, the orange ones are the unreproducible ones, and the red are failing to build from source, and the blacks are, depends, are not ready, or the architecture, the package is not for the architecture or something. So, and in testing, we are even over 90% reproducible packages now, which sounds nice, but it still means that there's almost 3,000 packages which are not reproducible, source packages. And we have, we categorize issues when we find them. So we have um, a Git repository, notes.git, where we have 206 different issues, and I just checked out of these 206, 93 are timestamp related and 39 are locale, and the 70 others are, I don't know. So we have 3,260 nodes, which are some issues we found in packages, and we have 1,800 unreproducible packages in SIT, but only 200 without a node. All the others we already looked at and put a node in there describing what the problem is, or maybe some problem, and the same for the packages which failed to build from source. We maintain this in, in a Git repository as a simple YAML file. And at the moment, it's Debian only, but we've just made the specification how to change the syntax so that we can have cross-distro nodes. So I guess the next will be FreeBSD, that FreeBSD puts in the nodes, because many issues are the same in different um, distributions. There, there are some which are specific to Debian, specific to FreeBSD, but most of them are the same because it's the upstream problem. So we want to merge this so that we can benefit from each other's work. So these are examples of issues we found. And I really, I picked them randomly. And as you can see, it's timestamps, timestamps, timestamps. And the other is um, fails to build from source, un uninvestigated test failures. Because we constantly build Debian, we also find lots of lots of bugs, packages failing to build from source against newer libraries. We have a category for this. So far, we filed 3,000 bugs, I think, and half of them are fails to build from source, more than half of them. And we filed about 1,000 bugs about reproducible issues with patches. More examples, it's timestamps in documentation system. Randomness in ICC color profiles. Who would think of that? So for Debian, you can just go to this old URL. It also works with the new one, slash source package name, and it will show you how reproducible it is. So if you go to reproducible Debian net slash Firefox, it will show you Firefox, the whole 50 megabyte or what it is, is bit by bit identical. If you go to Linux kernel, you will see that Diffoscope has problems understanding the diff. But you can go to any package, MySQL, whatever. Have a look. And because Debian has 24,000 packages, these are too many, we have package sets. So we have 42 package sets now. 
Um, so we have um, required, which is the base system in Debian. We have built essential key packages. Another package set is all packages which ever had a security issue. It's another thing. Um, we have KDE, GNOME, we have all OCaml, all Java, all Node, all whatever packages. Haskell is also nice. Perl is good with 90, over 95 reproducible. And yeah, required, we have, there's 10 packages missing where we have patches for. Another interesting thing is the Debian key packages. Key packages are the ones running on the Debian infrastructure and being used to create the CDs and are on the CD. And I've, <coughs> there's three and a half thousand key packages, so quite a lot. And you see it's a bit less than average because the good average comes from huge package collection like a Perl or the R, R packages, which are all reproducible, so they, um, blurry the statistic a bit. And the other problem is 86% sounds cool, but 437 packages to fix is really a lot. Because the, out of these 400, probably 40 are really hard, and four are insanely hard, I would guess, just by guessing. So there is four, this needs 400 uploads to achieve that, and still 40 are real hard problems. I can repeat, but you can also repeat. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Hello. Uh, just to understand the graph. So this means the key package is if it's on your infrastructure, and it's green here if this source key package builds and testing. Key package is just a, a specific set of packages, yes. which, are which are key to Debian. Yes. Um, and these are all source packages. And in general, we have these package sets which have some areas, like all GNOME packages. I understood. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if what makes it green here? Is this, does this mean that this already be deployed from within the distribution that is written? No, this is, at the moment, we are all only doing QA. Okay. I'll explain that in a second. We are not really in Debian yet, but we can get these results in Debian okay, with so yep. three patches, basically. And my, my point is just here that there's 400 packages, doesn't sound too much, but it's 400 packages, so it's, of, or other, my point is 86% sounds great, but 400 packages is still a lot. And this is the, <laughs> Um, Debian bug tracker, so we, oh, we didn't, we only filed 1,600 bugs. Uh, these are the ones without fails to build from source. So these are the, the bugs which are reproducible issues. So it's 1,600 bugs we filed, and roughly 1,000 are fixed, and 600 patches are still waiting. And then we filed more than 1,000 other bugs which are not in this graph about just common fails to build from source issues. And we try to always file bugs with patches because at the moment it's just QA and it's just wish lists. So we just say, here's the patch, could you please apply it? We don't, we don't file a bug, this package is unreproducible. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we only file it if we have a patch because if it's unreproducible, it's visible anyway. So what we did to achieve that, we agreed on a fixed build pass because many compilers embed the build location in their products and Debian historically builds in a random location and we made it fixed um, to fix this. There's now a patch for GCC. The GCC creates the same objects in arbitrary passes, but other compilers don't do that, so we'll have to stay with that for some time. We record the build environment in build info files. I'll explain that in a second. And we wrote strip non-determinism, which is a tool which recognizes timestamps mostly and removes them if they, are, if they are newer than the source date epoch, because then they must come from the build. Um, Bernard has also packaged strip non-determinism for SUSE now, so you could use that. We have Diffoscope as a tool to analyze what the difference comes from. Source that epoch I had. Disorder FS is another testing tool, which is a, fi a fuser file system which uh, returns random order of read deer. So you can test 
use this for testing and see whether it builds with different file system. And we have now two packages modified in the archive, which is Doxygen and dpackage, dpkg. Um, the rest is pure Debian. So we are not yet in Debian fully. We have these two packages modified. We hope to get there this year. Um, so reproducible builds demand a defined build environment. Because, and it's mandatory that it's possible to recreate this build environment because if you have different tool chains, then it's sheer luck whether you can recreate the same binary. It might be that a different GCC version creates the same object, but maybe not. So you can only be sure if you install the exact same dependencies. And so we, we cre created these build info files, um, verified this works for Debian with this build info files. I know that Koji from RPM is designed also to be able to recreate the exact same build environment. I've not verified this and the Koji developer said we need documentation for that. GUIX or Geeks is another distribution kind of thing where this was a design goal and it works for them. Um, and I'd like to hear other stories about how it's done in other projects. To explain this, build info file has the source files and the checksums, has the, the binaries and the checksums, and the collections of the installed dependencies. So the idea is you take this build info file, recreate the exact same environment, and then rebuild the binary and get the same results. For Debian, we are lucky because everything which was ever uploaded, even if it was only uploaded for half a day, is on Snapshot Debian Org. Snapshot Debian Org has 20 terabytes or something, and it has everything. Um, I know not every project has everything, um, but I'm doing the Debian work. <laughs> but it's clear that we have to solve it, and it's, um, it's also the other thing is I'll leave this out. So build info file is, in the Debian case, just the RFC 822 file, um, has a format, has the source package name, binary architecture sources. And here are the depends. In this example, the depends don't have checksums. They will get checksums. Um, elsewhere, we have not built infos are a Debian invention, but it's clear that other projects needs the same. I would recommend to also call them build info files with the different f contents of the format, but the principle will be the same. Um, and it's clear that it needs to be done because you need to describe the input you give to the system and the output to be able to compare it. So the build info files are the ones which users later download and can use to take the source and see if the binaries they create is the same. So what else we have done? We, we write a weekly report since May 2015, so we had report 60 just published, which is the progress in Debian, but we also now include FreeBSD and upstream things in it. Um, we had the summit in Athens, already talked about it. We have another one this year, again in Europe, maybe in Germany if it's in summer. And last year we had two Google Summer of Code students. This year we have four GSOC and Outreach students. It's really good contributions. It's really nice that they are exist. So Debian policy, this is where we want to go. Sources must build reproducible binaries, but We'll hope this will happen after stretch, and stretch is 2017, so this is, I hope, 2018 or 19. Uh, for now, we want to have this shell, reproduce, shell create reproducible binaries. Um, yeah, and this is really just a proof of concept at the moment. At the moment, Debian is still 0% reproducible. <coughs> um, it's just, three or four patches, but these patches are not merged for the freeze. We need to merge them now. And also then the problem is 
Debian doesn't rebuild the archive, Zuse does this, so when we have these patches inside, we still have 0% reproducible because everything will need to be rebuilt to create these build info files so other people can um, confirm this. So without build info files, there's nothing. So we'll see. I hope that Debian stretch will be partially reproducible in a meaningful way, whatever that means. But then there's also the other thing, how to rebuild, build info files, signing, user tools. This all needs, still needs design and code. I'll explain a bit more in a second. But what, how much time do, do I have? What time is that? Two. So the first thing we did was core boot. Core boot is a free BIOS. And it's now 100% reproducible with the CBIOS payload. So core, core boot is a BIOS thing and loads some payloads. And with one with the usual payload, all 250 something different core boot BIOSes are 100% reproducible. The problem is core boot doesn't release binaries. So it's not clear what to do there. Um, open WRT is also quite good. The patches were upstreamed and then OpenWRT decided to f renew itself into this lead project. Um, so that is a bit stalled there. NetBSD is also, there's some patches accepted and this Thomas Klausner who did it um, was busy with other things so it's stalled there but it's partly doable. FreeBSD um, the base system, the base system is the FreeBSD basic user land. It's 250 megabytes and there are three or four bits which are not reproducible, but they have patches. In 2013, somebody already did a test with their ports, which are packages, and they had 63% reproducible, but then they stopped working on it and only last autumn at must pick this up. And Ed will also soon build all the packages or the ports on this test setup. So we'll have other numbers and more cooperation there. Fedora, I set up simple tests of Fedora, but the RPM patches were not there and I was too busy with other stuff, so I left it there. I know that the RPM format includes the build time and the build host and the signature in the format. So they need to be set to null or other values. Bernard has some solution there. And yeah, I hope that I can take some patches home. And yeah, leave it there. Arch Linux, F-Droid is, I leave it there, it's too many. The Zuse status you will hear very soon from Bernard. I'm very much looking forward to that. And there are more projects with known activities. Bitcoin and Tor explain Signal also a month ago made a blog post or tweet saying they were reproducible. Ubuntu contacted us, but Ubuntu is waiting for this dpackage patch to be merged. Gix or NixOS. ElectroBSD is a fork from FreeBSD, which is reproducible already. Cubes, Tails, SubgraphOS, they are all looking into this. And there's also commercial proprietary software which is doing this which is really funny. Guess which? Is it Windows? The source code is available. Medical devices in your body, arms, critical infrastructure like power plants, cars, gambling machines, because the state collects taxes. That's why. And I think the other things, medical devices, self-driving cars, power plants, reproducible builds would be really a good idea. Okay. I don't know about OpenBSD and Gen2. So about the future work. The problem with these build info files, we need build info files in the Debian case for 20,000 source packages, for 10 architectures, and not all uh, are any, so it's probably 100,000 new files, which is 50% files in increase of the files on the mirrors, which is a problem with the inodes. And so it's just amount of files and we need to find, and we want to distribute them also. 
and we need detached signatures and we want several entities to sign it. So I rebuilt it and signed the built info file saying, yes, I could recreate it, you build it and sign it. And we need to find a way of revoking also. And also this rebuilders thing has not really been thought how we do it. There's basically no work done. There's, um, we could maybe think in the Debian case, individual developers sign some things, but I don't think this will scale. Other thing, we have rebuilders by large organizations. Pick your poison, pick your friends, whatever. And, and this thing is, the good thing is you have different entities. So you have the NSA and NASAR and CCC and whatever. Or we could just do Fedora rebuilds Debian and Debian rebuilds OpenSUSE and OpenSUSE rebuilds NetBSD. We need to think what is a good solution there. And we need end user tools. Do you really want to install this unreproducible software? Do you want to build those packages which unconfirm checksums before installing and confirm it's reproducible? How many signed checksums do you require to call a package reproducible? And this, this will differ. And by whom? It's, so we've come a long way, but we are still not there. Where we are is that we can probably do reproducible builds now, but everything behind is open. And it's not even really clear where we need to go and how do we get there. But at least it's a possible road now. Yeah, there's still lots of things to do. So if you want to get involved as a software developer, please merge our patches. This stop using build dates. Please read about source date epoch. Um, you can also just what Bernard did, test for yourself, build something twice, compare the results. There's lots of documentation. Um, we have two different IRC ch channels now. We have one Debian reproducible, one reproducible builds, but in general, come to the Debian thing and we are happy to help anybody with anything reproducible. We are not really Debian focused. And you can also join the existing team. It's really lots of fun. It's a very diverse group working on very different things. Like, I, I, should, I should have said this, I've not done any work on these patches. I wrote, I think, one or two patches doing reproducible things. So I just work on this test infrastructure and give talks. And doing patches is done by other people who are not working on the infrastructure. And um, there's many things to do. So, do you have questions? These are the URLs. Uh, the question, how much pushback we got, not so much. There's quite frequent that people, but I want my build date, it's important. But then you explain them, yeah, well, we have, it, it's not meaningful, the build date, and you explain it, and usually people understand. Um, so I would not say we have much pushback, rather we have lots of lots of people joining this. And we have 1,000 patches accepted, which in Debian context is quite a lot. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, if I get it, uh, built info is not part of uh, the package, right? So my question is why it, it should be. The question was whether why built info is not part. Yeah. Built info is a, is a patch we wrote for dpackage. And the dpackage maintainer is very careful because dpackage is used by other projects, not only Ubuntu, but many other projects. So he wants to have a, sp a detailed first, and he's really, really slow to accept patches. He took half of our patches already. There's a new release coming soon. And, and then it's also in the beginning, we had these build info files recording the information I had on the slides, and we have now come that we also might want to record more of the environment. And so he is very careful. And I think the uh, agreement we have now is that he will include these build info files, and the build info files have a, a, a format version, and that will be format version, I don't know, 0 0.1 or something. 
So he, that will get, but it's, we have been discussing with him s since last August, it's June now, so since 10 months. And I could also say I'm a bit disappointed about how fast these patches are merged. But I still hope these patches will get in in the next four months. It's, it's the problem is in Debian, the package is maintained by one person, and that person is not as fast as we would like. So plan is to, to include it into the packages? It will be included, yes. He's also in favor of it in principle, it's just the patch should be nicer here and there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Josef, did you ask if, this, if the build info should be part of the debt package? Or? Yeah, no, the, 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 the build info will be part of the build result. When you build a Debian package now, you get debt files, which are the binary packages, and you get one changes file, which describes the build results, has the checksum of the, all of this. And so, in future, when you build, you will get debts, a changes file, and a build info file. But I was just pulling out your, your answer to a different question. I know you cannot do that because then you would modify the binary file, I think. It's what was, yeah, of course. The, 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 the build info file describes the binary, so it cannot be part of it. No, it has the checksum of the result. So if you include it, that will modify the checksum. Yeah, yeah. So, so only checksum of result is, is tricky part. Let's solve this later at the bar. It's, okay. But it's technically not possible to include it. Yeah, yeah, final checksum is, is right. Oh. Right, we also have a Twitter account now for those into Twitter. You can follow us there. Fuck Twitter, they're well, awful. I would like to point out that uh, in RPM packages, we also put the checksum of the package itself into the package. So it definitely does work for some definition. Well, you, but the, the, that's the checksum of the content in the yeah. RP. It's not that it doesn't include the other checksum, but we can know, really... But in Debian packages, you only, in a Debian file, you have two separate files, which is like the control part and the data part, and you could just uh, build the checksums of those. No, because we want the binary result should be the same. What, what, what we can do in the, SUSE, or in the RPM case, which includes these signatures, and which are private signatures, so if you want to reapply them, you can just use the detached signature and put them against. But you cannot do the other thing. Let's take it to I'm, I'm happy to discuss this later, but I'm sweating and I would like to get off. <laughs> okay, thank you.